Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today's video, we're going to make a loom knit mitten. You'll need a 24 peg loom and your loom tool, a darning needle, a pair of scissors. I use number five yarn and I would recommend using either double strands on that or a number six for this project just to make it a little thicker. So let's get started. We're going to start by making a slip knot. And we're going to place that on our anchor peg. We want to make sure that it's snug but not too tight. Then we're going to start wrapping on peg one. And this is our cast on. So there are going to be two stitches on each peg. So you wrap one and then you wrap another on top of the bottom. Then you take the bottom stitch and place it over the top. We're going to cast on 20 pegs. So again, we're not going to go the whole way around the loom. We're only going to cast on 20 pegs. When you get to 20, stop and we'll do our next step. Okay, now we're going to go back the other way and the pattern we're going to follow, we're going to do two knits. So this actually is a unit. So we're going to do two units and then we're going to do two purl stitches. To do a purl stitch, you take your working yarn and you put it below the stitch on the peg. You reach with your hook, pull that loop out, and place the loop back onto the peg. So again, reach in for that yarn, make that loop, take it off, and put the loop on the peg. So our pattern, again, is two knits and two purls, and the knit is a U-knit. We will do this until we get back to the anchor peg. So keep going. Okay. Now we're at the anchor peg, so we're going to do a purl stitch. And we're going to work our way around to the other side where peg 20 is. So again, we're doing two purls and two knits now that we're on our way back. We're actually going to continue this pattern for 20 rows. So if you have a knit counter, you'll want to get it out or use good old fashioned pen and paper. And you'll want to count 
back and forth. So one way is a row and going back is a row. So you want to do 20. Okay, I've done my 20 rows of two knits and two purls. So now we're going to start our next step. We're going to do six rows of E-wrap. So I'm going to start with peg one and do the E-wrap all the way to peg 20. Okay, now we're going to go the other way. So we're going to actually knit over. So we'll take the bottom over the top. And again, we're doing six rows of E-wrap. So we just completed our first row of E-wrap and then I'm gonna show you what to do next. So you'll wanna knit over. Okay, so push your stitches down. Find where your working yarn is. Now we're going to skip that first peg. So we're not going to wrap the first peg and we're gonna go to the second peg. So skip that and we're gonna start there and wrap until we get back to the anchor peg. And we'll continue doing that back and forth and we're going to skip that first peg each time. So then we knit over And I will show you here, we're going to go the other way, and again, we're going to skip that first peg. So we aren't going to wrap the first peg. So push your stitches down again. And I'll show you one more time how we skip the first peg, and we'll just wrap the other way. And continue doing that until you reach six rows.
Now it's time for the thumb. So we're going to count and we're going to do five over from the anchor peg. So on peg six, I'm going to put a stitch marker. That's going to remind me not to go further. Okay, so I have my stitch marker on peg six. And again, it's just going to remind me not to go any further. And we're going to start and just do an E-wrap. Stop before you get to the stitch marker. Yes, before you get to the stitch marker. And then take the bottom over the top. So again, this is the E-wrap. We're going to E-wrap back and forth, and this is going to form our thumb. Now, a lot of people say when they're making mittens that it doesn't look like a thumb right away, and that's true. It doesn't, it takes a lot of going back and forth before the thumb starts to poke out. So if yours does not look right right away, don't worry. Just keep going and you will form your thumb as long as you're doing it like this. Your thumb will start to poke out, so don't worry. Just go nice and slow, back and forth, and it'll happen. Something else I want to talk about when it comes to the thumb. Obviously, everybody's different. Everybody has a different size of thumb. So your amount of rows is going to really depend on who you're making this for, how big the thumb is, uh, the age of the child, obviously. And um, so for my thumb, I have 19. 19 rows of going back and forth. So I'm doing this 19 times. So I'm counting one way as one row going back the next row. So one way is one, one, going back it's two, going back is three, etc. So again, just keep this up and your thumb will start to poke through. As you can see, my thumb for this mitten is starting to poke through underneath here, behind the loom, under the loom here. So again, it does take some time and it does, see, there it is. It does feel like you're getting nowhere fast, but you're getting somewhere. Okay, my thumb is done. So now I'm going to start e-wrapping again. So we'll start at the anchor peg and we're going to do our e-wrap all the way to peg 20 and then we're going to go the opposite way.
okay, you're going to continue doing this until you get to the length of your mitten. A good rule of thumb that I tell people is you'll want to see the very tips of the fingertips. So you don't want the fingertips to be completely covered. Then your mitten will be too big. So you'll want to see the end of the fingertips of the person you're making this for. Now if you're not you don't have that person in front of you. Um, my, I made 12 stitches or 12 rounds of the e wrap for my length. Um, my children are between 8 and 10, so they're about the same size, so that seems to work for them right now. So um, just keep doing that, and then I will show you the next step. Now we're going to skip the first peg and we're going to knit the second peg e-wrap the third peg and then we're going to knit an e-wrap and do this until you reach peg 20 so knit and then e-wrap. Okay, we've made our way to the end here, so we'll want to turn around and do it the other way. So we're going to start with the knit, now we're doing the e-wrap, and again we're going to skip that first peg. So we're going to do knit e-wrap the other way. So continue doing that, and then we'll do our next step. Now we're going to take the stitch off of peg one and place it on peg two. And then we're going to go to where our working yarn is and e-wrap back to the anchor peg to where you took the stitch and moved it over. You'll want to repeat this process on peg 20 and take peg 20 off and move it to peg 19 and e-wrap that way as well. Now once you secure this, you'll want to wrap those two stitches as one. Or, I'm sorry, you'll knit over those two stitches as one. So continue taking the bottom stitch over the top. And then we're going to bind off. That'll be our next step, is binding off. So you'll want to push your stitches down. And then we're going to take our working yarn And we're going to wrap the working yarn around the loom a few times. 
we're going to need enough yarn to bind off even if you have a little bit extra that's better than not having enough at all so give your yarn a clip and put it to the side okay and then we're going to take our working yarn and put it below the stitch on the peg and pull the yarn out just like we're doing a purl stitch so you want to do this for each peg down to number 20 you want to our goal is to get our mitten off the loom now so for each peg you'll want to do this process of pulling the yarn like a um, purl stitch so just reach in for the yarn and pull it all the way out you're not going to make a loop you're going to pull that yarn all the way out And again, do this until you get to peg 20. Now we're just going to pop the stitches off of the loom. So we're removing the mitten off of the loom just by popping on the top, popping them off. Okay, so our mitten is now off the loom. And this is what it looks like. The top is still open. It's more of a flat panel with the thumb right now. So we are actually going to turn it inside out and match up the sides. And what we're going to do is start sewing with your darning needle. And I'll show you exactly how. All the way up. So I'm going to start at the bottom where you put the hand in and just line up the stitches on the side. You don't want to go too far in but just on the outside because you don't want to make your mitten any smaller. And then just work your way up. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but try to get it as close as you can, even 
So see how I'm cinching it together? So just match up the same stitches on the side. And I have a long piece of yarn that I tied a knot after at the end, as you can see there. So just keep pulling it through and keep working your way up the mitten. Okay, so now we are at the part where the thumb is starting. So let me just show you. You'll want to close up all the way that triangle right there. Right there. And, and then we'll eventually work our way around the thumb. But we just want to sew that and continue going to the top. Okay, so we are all the way at the top. So now we're going to pull on our drawstring and close up the very top. So we left that drawstring there so we could close it up. And we didn't do anything with it, and this is why. We just want to pull on it tight and close that hole up. And if there's a little hole at the top, you'll want to finish that. Um, but it should be all the way to the top. But you can see it more if there's anything you missed after you pull on the drawstring. And now we're going to work on the thumb. So again, you work the stitches the same way you work the side of the mitten. So you just want to close both sides of the thumb. And again, go on the outside stitches so you don't make the thumb smaller than it should be. So as you can see, I'm just matching the stitches and putting my darning needle through it. And you'll want to do that for both sides of the thumb. So do this process for both sides of the thumb. We're closing the thumb up. So here we're going up the other side, matching the stitches and going at the very outer part of the thumb so we don't make the thumb any smaller than it is. And just work your way up just like the other side. Okay, now we're going to pull the drawstring at the top. So we're going to close the mitten up at the top. So we'll just pull that. And just even it out the best way you can.
And we're going to give it a snip. And then I'm just going to tie it up at the top. Make a knot. Now you can sew your loose ends into the mitten or you can also snip it with a pair of scissors. Do whatever works for you. And that's going to do it for a mitten. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos like this. And I will see you at the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.